Yeah, guess what? Got another tent. So let's find out why this tent is appearing all over YouTube all the time. 3FUL gear, it's a brand I've used a few times and I really rate them in terms of build quality. And the Lanshan Pro and Lanshan series generally has just become absolutely everywhere. Everyone seems to be using them and rightly so, very well made and very good value. However, this is not a Lanshan. This is one that I've always wanted for me and my wife for this summer actually to use. And as you can see by the weight, we are talking substantially higher. 2.2 kilos as it stands just now, which is actually a bit heavier than I expected. I thought it would be about 1.9. So here's the difficult bit, the name of it. I don't know how you pronounce this. A Taihi 2? A Taji 2? Any of you watching YouTube and watching tent videos generally will have seen this pop up regularly in the last few months. What I do like is this bag actually, it comes in a burrito style bag with a velcro fastener. It just means you can get into the tent quickly, but more to the point when the tent is wet, you can pack it away really easily. I uh, don't know if I'll need these tyres, so we'll probably save a bit of weight on them. Let's get rid of those for a starter, and let's see what's inside. So the tent comes in a nice khaki colour, which is what I've asked for, and I've gone for what they call the four season inner. So, what have we got? One guy, patch, uh, patching kit. Typical 3FUL, just to kind of give you this general fabric that's supposed to, I think, fix just about everything on the tent. Uh, pole tube repair sleeve, quite unusual for 3FUL, you don't see that very often. And another set of guys there, just two, don't know why there's only two, that's a wee bit worrying, but anyway. Ten, One, two, 12 three. X shaped pegs with cord on the end of them, so that makes them a lot easier to pull out. And they feel like they'll be very strong. I don't think these will bend. Actually, I've just realised these are uh, two guy lines. So this is the four corner guys that will attach to the metal clips on the poles. And the poles themselves, they're not DAC. They're just a kind of cheaper aluminium version. You can tell by the wee kind of rivet marks. These wee marks they put on there. Uh, metal clipped, captive metal clips on them for the guy lines. Fairly chunky diameter, I don't know, but it's about 9mm or something. I'll put that on the screen. Um, anyway, everything looks pretty straightforward. Uh, no footprint, so let's get the whole thing up and uh, see how easy it is to pitch. And apologies to 3FUL, it does come with a footprint. Just found it, so that'll probably explain the extra weight. So I said about 2.2, let's just measure this in its own right and find out what it is. If I'm actually walking or trekking with a tent, I don't tend to use the footprints, so I tend to dump them and use a silver foil blanket. Uh, so what's that? Just under 200. So taking the tent back to about the two kilos, which is what I expected. There's also a simple wee instruction sheet. But the great thing about this tent, with an inner and an outer connected and an exoskeleton set up, it should be really easy to use. I don't think we'll need these instructions. As you might expect, two very long cross poles and one short brow pole, I guess, that'll go over the middle to create a bit more internal volume and peak height. So one of the things I do like about 3FUL tents, they have this plastic membrane, I think it is, inside the storm flap, so they never very stiff it never actually catches on the zip like a lot of other tents which has always been one of these annoying bugbears you get in a lot of them and i think it has an elastic tie back oh yeah here we go so an elastic tie back there just to hold the door and a simple ring clip that seems quite good and you can see what i mean by the four season in so solid polyester and just mesh vents at the top there's also a three season version which is mesh all the way from the tree upwards Quite nice that the uh, curve in the zip means that the door hangs, it doesn't drop into the dirt, but also it's quite easy to open one handed. Quite like that. And let's see how this inner door ties back. So it's just a loop and toggle. The loop, unfortunately, is not elastic, which I prefer, but looks fairly substantial tape instead. First impressions, yeah, quite a nice size. Appears to be a rectangle. 
Um, so the same width at both ends, which means we can sleep head to foot or just use the angle of the slope to suit. Two vestibules, which is also very important for us as a two-person tent. And the solid inner, as I say, will be a bit warmer. Love the exoskeleton design. I think it's brilliant that um, you can put it up as one in the wet and not get wet. Not have to get the inner soaked like a lot of American tents, like the MSRs. So that always is a plus point to me. The inner can be detached and you can pack that away if it's damp in the morning and the fly sheet is really soaking. Um, one thing I would say about the inner is it sags slightly. It's a wee bit because it doesn't use the poles itself and it just hangs by clips. It's not the tightest of inners. So lengthwise, it's not bad. I'm not touching the fabric or anything. I've probably got about a foot beyond my feet. And if I swing you around, try and show you here, uh, six inches maybe at my head, and I'm only five foot eight. So probably if you're above six foot or so, you might find yourself touching the inner fabric, but it shouldn't transfer damp from the outside, which is good. Head tight in the middle, five foot eight, no mat, mm, two or three inches. So I reckon probably it'll just be touching my head on the inner once I put my Thermarest in. So with my Thermarest Neo Air X-Therm inside, yeah, perfectly adequate. That's fine. I think it's worth mentioning that uh, is it Novice Wild Camper's channel, he mentioned that he got some water ingress coming in possibly around about the tape here, which isn't unsurprising. I get that a lot where the stress points are. You sometimes get the odd drip coming through. So I'll probably silicon seal these as a safeguard on the outside. So with two mats in there, you can see there's still plenty of elbow room space either side of those mats. They're just standard size Thermarest Neowares. And because it's rectangular, let me just take you around, you've got the same width at the bottom, so we could swing around head to foot, or if the slope is, say, heading that way, we could turn it head and then feet facing that way. So you've got that flexibility. The other thing worth mentioning is that compared to the Big Agnes Copper Spur, the Copper Spur tapers at one end, which is one of the bugbears I've got about it, really like it as a tent, but just not as flexible in terms of the floor plan. Whereas this is completely universal either way. Right, that's me now sitting on the mat as if I was cooking. And actually, yeah, no, it's fine. My head is not touching. I've still got a bit of space. I'm just looking at the stitching generally just to check and see how it is. Most of it looks all right. There's a couple of wee loose ends here and there. But in terms of build quality, I definitely think 3FUL has the edge over Nature Hike. They are slightly better made. And the way the, the, just the fabric is cut, I think it's laser cut and patched at the reinforced areas. Just gives me more confidence about it. One downside is 3FUL, you really need to do better on the pockets. One tiny little modest pocket for two people. Nowhere to store gear or tuck stuff away. If they just put netting right along the heads or the side, it would just make it such a much more livable tent. The one little concession it has is a hanging lantern hook here. But again, if you look around, there doesn't appear to be any closed drying loops. Again, something you get on Big Agnes. Those little features just make the tent much more livable long term when you're inside it. And you can see the prop vent from the inside here, so that could be closed off in bad weather if the weather's coming from this direction. And you've got the equivalent on the other side as well, so everything mirrors itself. I was maybe slightly unfair on the vestibule. Yeah, you can cook in here okay, actually. It does tend to come down quite low just at the end there and curve away to the peg. But, yeah, not too bad. Maybe just pull this inner back slightly. Another downside of this tent, or another feature that it could do with, would be a two-way zip up here. So you could get extra venting when cooking, or just extra ventilation when warm. It's only a one-way zip. So again, another wee feature, just these kind of things that make the difference. And it would not cost much for 3FUL to do it. There looks to be a reasonable four or five, well, maybe three to four inches of clearance between the inner and the outer. So there shouldn't be any major problems with clapping together of the fly in the inner and transferring moisture as a result. And as you can see, the inner's just got the standard hooking clips to take it down as I mentioned before. Surprisingly the ground sheet, although it's very large, actually doesn't seem to have a middle seam running this way, so a bit less to tape. So it has a perimeter tape going all the way around which should work fine in case the ground gets flooded out and there doesn't seem to be a, another weak point on the ground sheet at all. So that's quite confidence inspiring. 
So it's measuring out pretty much by its specs. It's 130 wide, which is really generous. If you look at an MSR tent, accesses, etc., elixirs, generally 127. And that just that extra inch or so it does make a difference. And it looks to be about 218 mil, sorry, centimetre long. I make it about 98 high. The little swivel hub in the middle is quite a smart detail. So your inner pole, sorry, your lower pole will clip in there, your middle pole here, and then your brow pole over the top. These are 7001 T6 alloy, so not as good as your DAC NSL, but then you're not paying for DAC NSL prices. The whole tent is very good value. I'll put that on the screen. So, to me, something like a copper spur from Big Agnes, yeah, similar. But the great news is on this one, is the exoskeleton pitch, which is something I really like, and also just the internal volume. So it's worth mentioning that it was gifted to me by James at uh, Collins Outdoors and Camperless. I'll put some links to his website. Although it was gifted, actually I had it on my shopping list, genuinely did, because it actually ticks all the boxes for me and my wife. So we bought the Nature Hike Force UL2 initially just to try that. It was very good actually and has a huge amount of room as well, but it is single skin, so it's nice to be able to try a double skin equivalent and see how we get on. Um, so thanks to James. I'll put some links to the websites below in case you want to have a closer look, but it is very good value. It's a copper spur, I think, rival, effectively. If you don't have the money to buy a copper spur, I think it's very similar. Um, the one upside though I would say is that the flat, the floor is all one shape, it's one width either end, which has got over the copper spur, but it doesn't have the features. So there you go, the 3FUL gear, Tahi 2, Taji 2, Taji 2, I don't know how to pronounce it, stick something in the comments if you do know. Anyway, I think it's an excellent value for money, large, well featured tent, brilliant for two, two kilos is a great weight, it's lovely exoskeleton um, pole system which is one of the key points that I really wanted one. Two doors, which is great, and it's nicely made. 3FUL gear do make the stuff, I would say, slightly better than Nature Hike. On the downside, it's missing quite a number of just little user-friendly features. Two-way zips, hanging lines, a lot more pockets would be great. But, you know, at the price, can you really complain? Or maybe they could just tweak it and it wouldn't be much more expensive. Some mesh just attached to this would be great. Anyway, I don't think I'll be using it in the mountains. I think it's got too many large flat panels and it would get badly affected by wind. But for below the tree line, for the kind of stuff that I'll use in more sheltered conditions, I think it will make a really nice, comfortable option that's still packable. So, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, just drop me a line below or any comments. I'm going to get out and use this thing, so I'll give you an update once I've actually used it in anger. And we'll see how we get on. So, see you soon.